Hi guys, so this is a quick video um, I want to put in before the main video. Uh, a lot's changed. I've done a lot of different things since I made this video. Uh, it has good information. I felt it was good enough to keep keep the role going with the videos that I have. So I'm going to continue with them. But uh, I just wanted to state that uh, a lot's changed since then. And I've done a lot of different things. Uh, so just look at this as information that can be applied and you can use. But expect the coming videos to uh, to have different things or different changes going. But uh, so far, it's uh, it's been a good experience, and I have lots lots of content to uh, to share. And uh, this is going to be kind of my progress for the next few videos, and then I'll go back and redo my actual exp explanations and, and hopefully the teachings of that I can from what I learned. And then of course, go back and redo the the basic cop tuning stuff. I really want to get back to that too as well. So uh, just enjoy what I have here, and uh, there's more to come. What's going on, guys? Um, I'm back to do part two of. Uh, of our E85. Um, what I want to get get set up here is uh, what I've gone through up up till now. There's been a lot that's uh, that's happened, and a lot I've gone through. A lot of stuff I've changed, figured out. A lot of forms, a lot of potential purchases that I haven't haven't done. So this E85 has been a a radical roller coaster for me, but. Um, I want to get into exactly what's what's going on to show you guys and get you caught up on everything that I've done. So first thing I'm going to do is load up the um, man my Corona here. Gotta get a haircut. Uh, the version three map, the one we talked about in the last video, and the one that we got ready for the car to uh, to flash and to drive around. So the first thing I want to really make note of here is um, the volumetric efficiency table um, this is what was working for me during my 93 tuning uh, I was a between 10.8 and 11.3 as far as air fuel ratio goes so that was it's good enough for me I, I still had plenty of fine tuning to do but it, it worked I could do poles and everything was great um, so I switched over to speed density and a lot of things changed um, all the previous stuff I had in 93 that was supposed to carry over, while it did, I still have to do a lot more adjustments, which is fine, you know, it's understandable. So let's kind of go through what I noticed and what I saw because of that. So I'm gonna load up, let's see, let's load up the next map, just to kind of show you what I did, what was a little different. So if we come back and we compare it to the first one. And you can kind of see the dates. We're about uh, two days off. There wasn't much that I did different, but if we could compare it, first thing I did was I had to adjust my speed density right off the bat. Stuff was different. You know, I was either too rich or too lean. Um, this closed loop to open loop delay, that was something I was just messing with. Um, I was getting, uh, I wanted to see how it would affect my fueling once I hit the gas. So that was just something for me, and then I did some load compensations to adjust for everything now. So that's something I should adjust. Um, we'll unload that. And that's kind of what happened. I just made some changes, I, like everything you've done before, and you went through a few different maps. So I, want, I really want to talk about where I'm at now. So we won't talk about 4.0. That's a separate thing. But uh, this is where I'm sitting at now. So if you look at my speed density table, we're up in the high 9s, the high 90s across the board. I don't really hit um, and everything's in bar right now too so that's a whole other thing to talk about as well. Let's go ahead and convert this back just so we can talk about it a little bit easier. Um, I don't really hit 40s too much until now but uh, this is one thing that I've gone through. Um, when I got a good amount of E85 in the car. Um, I was hitting about E9 or sorry E70 on the ethanol content. I took the car and did a few uh, pulls in Mexico, as they say, and I noticed that my car was hitting 12.1, 12.2, 12.3, 12.4, 12.5 AFR, um, and that really threw me off. I was like, "Holy moly, what's going on?" So when I saw that, I went out and bought a new um, air fuel ratio gauge. I figured maybe something's wrong with my, my Innovate. I don't know what, that's just the way I work. I bought a new gauge, 
plugged it all in just to see if that gauge was going. I had that one for a couple of years now. It gets ragged down pretty hard. Um, so I threw this this AM in there, the new um, that everybody recommends. And same thing, getting the same numbers. Okay, so maybe the gauge is reading wrong. Maybe the the sensor bung right next to the turbo is too close. You know, E85 throws off oxygen sensor readings. I don't know. I, I went through all those different ways. Again, I'm still learning, as are you guys. Um, so I started playing with my speed density and increasing it a little bit. And although that helped, it wasn't that big of a change. And then I thought, why do I have to mess with my speed density table? Because if I do, it's going to affect my 93 tune. It's going to be a lot richer, a whole lot richer. Because you're talking, in this area, I was at like 88. And this is like 94, 93. You're talking probably 10 air fuel ratio um, on 93. So that I went through multiple revisions. That's why I'm up to like you know, 10 or 12 new revisions on the map. If you go back to the open here. You know, I've gone through several different steps, different processes to get where I'm at. And it's only been in a week or so time span that I've been doing this. And uh, I was at a loss. I'm like, why am I that, 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 um, that rich, or sorry, that lean? And so I started looking at the tuning side. Okay, maybe I missed something. I went and read back Cobb's Guide multiple times. I looked into it. And then I went down the path of uh, um, putting out some some uh, posts on the forums, talking to people. Uh, went to Hyper or HP Academy. I signed up for their course on ethanol tuning and flex uh, flex fuel tuning. Um, not a bad course if you've never messed with E85 and you're just now learning about it. But it's more of a like a informative course than it is really practicality practical course uh, they don't really teach you how to tune the car at all with ethanol they give you a few ideas of what to look at but I, I don't know if it was really worth it for me personally um, I don't know if I want to get a refund because they offer a 60 day refund because I think they're doing a good thing and I would like to support it and I did get some information from it um, but uh, that's a separate thing so where I'm at now right I, I posted on um, a few different forums for STIs. I posted on uh, the HB Academy forum once I signed up because you get access. I even went and talked to Cobb themselves. And uh, Cobb was an interesting one. Of course, they can't tell you how to tune your car, so I had to word my questions correctly. And I worded it basically, what were you guys thinking when you designed or programmed the flex fuel tuning into the access tuning software? I wanted to understand their thought process. So I finally got to one of their engineers um, and he basically went through and explained all the different uh, variables that the car could go through. Um, biggest one that he told me about was flex fuel different, or sorry, fuel pressure differential. That how those things can be variable and they try to make them constant the best they can, but in the real world they will be variable. So flex fuel is, uh, the diff pressure differential can be adjusted and you can play with the tables, but the concept is the table should make adjustments to you to keep your pressure constant. And I think that's more for people that have um, like high flow fuel pumps and might go under their fuel pressure or might bounce around too much. I'm pretty much stock and my pressure has been great. Um, the other thing he did, he did tell me, and I'll, and I'll go into this last part of it, one thing that I can do without getting himself in trouble. Uh, and then he also told me different things like fuel temperature make a difference, um, all, all kinds of things like that. So th those are things to think about. Those are the deep things that you can get into once you get into multiple car tuning. So with that being said, uh, let's, let's take a look at where I'm at now. So I want to pull up a log. I want to give you an idea of what I was seeing. Um, and again, I'm doing this video very unorganized. I, wanna, I want this to be kind of raw. Um, so here's, here, we'll just give you the latest one. Here's a drive I went out with some friends and did some pulls. So normal stuff that I do, we're looking at a histogram or a table graph. Um, RPM here, um, make sure this is still recording, okay. Uh, manifold absolute pressure and wide band sensor. I, I renamed it just so it's easier to filter. Um, this is what it looks like with all the data. Everything going, um, can I get rid of this guy here? Yeah. So if I click on 1381, this is including down here the max of 2238. I don't want those things throwing off. So I, I'm using a data filter over here. And um, 
what this is going to do is it's going to try and filter out everything uh, between, I think I set it to like everything above 13 air fuel ratio and everything below 9 air fuel ratio. It's a data filter. So basically, click on it and you can kind of set up a little uh, filter down here. So you enable the filter and now this gives me more information. Now when I click on this guy, it shows 12 as the max, minimum will be 11.3. So, not too bad, right? Okay, so th these numbers look okay. Um, so let's go ahead and worry about just everything above 12. If you look at this, for anybody who's tuning their car and it's kind of new, you're gonna be a little worried. You're like, wow, there's 12s everywhere. 12.9, 12 12.1, 12 uh, 12.2. You know, that's, that's lean, that's really, really lean. Wow, wow. Which is exactly what I was thinking. You know, I'm worried. I'm like, what do I gotta do now? What do I figure out? Where do I go from here? So, um, after doing the quick research of E85 wide open throttle AFRs, and this is across GTRs and Corvettes and 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 uh, the um, Evo forms and stuff like that, even SRT forms, um, it's actually pretty standard. Most people tune to about 12.5 on the most lean side of things. People seem to sit around 12 a fuel ratio, so that's one thing I didn't look too much into before I kind of went deep into this was. I knew to target about 11.8 from what I read, but going deeper, I look at it and it's okay. At least this is my personal opinion that it's okay. Um, but still, I don't want to be that lean, right? So I spent the last week and a half kind of freaking out, doing all kinds of decisions, and this is what I meant, is because of this air fuel ratio being this lean. So if you look at some of these two, they're not too many here. So at this cell, you hit about 32 counts of 12s. 12.5 um, being the highest over here, 12.6 being the highest. So it gets a little bit lean, but I tell you, I never saw any knock at all. Like E85 is crazy, dude. It's really cool stuff. Never saw any knock. All I did was increase boost from 21 pounds to 25 pounds. I didn't touch any timing, so I guess obviously that's that's there. But <coughs> um, so that's that's definitely one thing I wanted to to kind of share was that do this, you're gonna go through all kinds of different ups and downs. Um, I, I'm hitting 12s, 12s seem to be fine, but I want I want to change it, right? I don't like that. And we talked about uh, me adjusting my speed density table here to, to compensate, okay? The higher the number, the more fuel it adds, the more air it adds, right? The more air it thinks it has, the more fuel it will add. So this table actually didn't do too much to make the, too many adjustments. Um, but I can't say that for 100% because I only did it a few times. I didn't make too many polls after the change, so we'll forget that. So what Cobb said, without Cobb actually saying it, the guy I spoke to, he kind of agreed with me that you need to go into flex fuel, you need to go down to your blending ratio table, and I kind of talked about this in my first video, go down to the flex fuel injector scale and make some adjustments. Now, this table has the adjustment saved, although I haven't tested them yet, but I'm pretty sure this is where I need to go. So this table is normally 0 0.10, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up to, to 1, right? You can see it's 0 0.55 now, 65, 75, 85. So the injector scale, I'm telling the car to blend more, to push to that higher scale faster at 50% um, ethanol concentration and higher. To me, and the way that I was told is that this is going to add more fuel because your scale, your injector scale is going to be higher. So more fuel is going to be flowing. So that should ho hopefully um, richen me out a little bit. Um, okay, I still got to test this, but that's the theory I'm working on right now. Um, so with that being said, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, following normal tuning procedures, I haven't done any power tuning yet. I'm just kind of make sure I figure out my AFRs the way I want, make sure it's constant. Uh, a few other things that I did notice, and this is just information for you guys. Um, let's change this up. So if you're running a wide band or trying to figure out how to hook up your wide band to your car, um, you look how sporadic this is. So this is a wide band, and this is over here in the green, 17.8, 16.3, 16.2, 16.1. .1. So. <coughs> If you uh, look how sporadic this is, right? This is the zero to five volt analog out on my Innovate wideband. 
and it, it, it's, it's weird the way how sprat how jumpy those uh, those lines are with the numbers and then if I go up and I pull let's say one of my older ones we will just pull a really old one and we'll go change this to my innovate which is plugged in through my serial cable I guess it's still kind of jumpy but it's not as bad you can see how that those numbers are way way faster or they're not as jumpy so that's one thing I want to look at too is using a serial cable versus the wideband cable to log um, so let's see going forward we're gonna make some changes here let's go ahead and go back to mega log we'll hit open I'm gonna load up this latest here and we're going to look at injector duty cycle. We'll just pop it on in right here. Injector duty cycle. Oh, that's the wrong one, is that? Open. Alright, so injected duty cycle here. Sorry, just checking out my neighbors. Um, 95. Look at a bad boy right there. Let's go ahead and jump to that. Injected duty cycle, 95. So, let me make it a little bit smaller. I think that's a pole. Yeah, so there's a pole right there. When you see these white lines, I set this up to show anything over 80% throttle so I know where an actual pole is happening. So, 80%. TPS, we jumped up to 100 TPS, and the other thing too, if you look at this, my load, 6.3, or 3.63. Um, before E85, the highest load I would hit is like 3.3, so there's definitely a lot more load going on with the, with the boost, obviously. Um, but as we jump through here, at the very tip of that pole, I hit 90%, 95%, but 90% injector duty cycle. So with that being there, I went in and ordered uh, 1300X injectors. Uh, I had the 1050Xs and that's obviously not enough with where I'm at. So we need bigger injectors. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go pull everything apart. That should come in tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to update those injectors. So if you're running, you know, at, at this level where I'm at, 400 horsepower or so, uh, with 20 plus pounds of boost, you're going to run out of your injectors on E85. So definitely make that jump. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to come out and talk, make this video and talk about this, talk about the few things that I went through, um, a few adjustments that I've made and I'm going to make um, that you can take a look at yourself. Uh, so again, from what I said, 12 to 12.5 AFR is fine. Um, it's not really recommended to stay like that, especially in like track days they say, but street driving it should be fine because you're only doing a few poles generally. I would target about 12 AFR. Um, I went through hours of reading forms of what people found out and everybody said from pretty much 11.5 to 12.5 AFR uh, there was no power difference. There wasn't much of a difference between power at those different ratios. Um, it's better to obviously be a little bit leaner if you can but control your exhaust gas temperatures. Uh, definitely again Andre over at HP Academy keeps reiterating this, but understand there's a difference between the AFRs that I'm saying and what the actual AFR readings are of ethanol. It's actually 9.8, if I'm not mistaken, is the actual stoichiatric um, number for it. Uh, I'm learning to use Lambda for everything, just so it's easier. Lambda doesn't care of the fuel, just only looks at the content of oxygen. So that's actually the, the best way to do it. Um, but you can use AFR because the conversion usually happens from Lambda to AFR. Just don't get lost on what fuel you're using and how it's working. So with that said, um, I'm going to get these injectors installed. We're going to be able to tune the car. I'm going to test out this ethanol change here, adding a little bit more fuel just to be safe for now. Um, I'm at about, I think my fuel targets... 24 pounds, about 25 pounds of boost, so I'm pretty much maxed out on my engine block itself before it blows. 
Um, yeah, that's that's all I really wanted to go through. Um, use the use the fuel sensor, definitely that came with the kit or purchase it. Cobb definitely recommends you using it because of that differential change. Uh, I wanted to use it for my TVG delete uh, plug for the uh, wideband, but I guess I'll have to use a serial cable, which can be flaky. Um, I think that's my serial adapter that might be causing that, but oh, that's that's about it. I can't really think of anything else to talk about. Um, I did drop down tip enrichment a little bit uh, on the fuel tables here. I did lower it about 10%. Uh, it's getting pretty rich when it starts to blend over. So that also may be a speed density issue that I have to adjust. Uh, let's see. AVCS, I did go back to pretty much stock AVCS just to make sure that the extra fuel that I was adding or the extra air I was kind of adding in here wasn't affecting those air fuel ratios. So I'll make that adjustment later. Um, yep, that's it. That's it, really. So I'm going to get those injectors installed. I'll probably make a video of that just to show. And we'll go from there. So until next time, see you guys.